Yeah, in this video I want to briefly go over the notational conventions regarding linear algebra and deep learning. So, this is something we have seen before from the perceptron lecture. So at the top there is a perceptron and now imagine we do inference. So um, inference in the context of deep learning means basically predicting the label of uh, input feature vector. So in the perceptron, assume we have one training example as input or let's say test, um, test data point or test example as input. Um, so how we would do that is uh, as follows. We would have x transpose w plus b, the bias unit, and then get the net input and then we give it um, to the activation function which was the threshold function and then we get our prediction. So here this part is doing this linear algebra um, computation x transpose um, dot w plus b. Um, so now this is for one data point. We can actually also extend that to multiple data points. So if we want to do that for multiple data points like n training examples or n test examples, we can use a design matrix for representing the data, an n times m dimensional design matrix. So n uh, is the number of examples and we would write it as follows. So um, here x is n times m, w is m times 1, b is just a scalar, is a 1, and then the output should be um, n times m dot m times 1, it should be um, n times 1. Yeah, n times 1, that should be our output. So in this way we have a vector, so each value in the vector is the net input for the corresponding test example. So that is just how we can process more data points at the same time with still a single operation here. Now in deep learning we usually have these neural networks with hidden layer uh, representations. So we will learn about that a little bit later in this course, actually like I think next week already. So we have, let's say, one data point as input here, that's the feature vector, m features. Um, and then we will have a number of outputs. So let's say h is the number of hidden units in a hidden layer. And then we have also multiple hidden layers, so we can have another hidden layer and another one and so forth. So in this way what I want to highlight here is that whereas in the perceptron we have a single output here, here we can have multiple outputs. So how can we deal with such a yeah, scenario using linear algebra? So what we can do is we can now have a weight matrix. So before I talked about the design matrix for the inputs, now there's one input vector, one data point, but multiple outputs. So in this way we can use a matrix here. So this matrix would be um, h times m dimensional. So let's write that down. Um, h times m. So h rows and m features, whereas the features are corresponding to the m here. So the m matches here. So what we do is we put the w in front, the x second. So this would be, if I write this down, h times m dot m times 1. And b should be then also the same dimension as h, because there is one bias unit for each computation here. So the output should be h times m dot m times 1, h times 1 h times one dimensional output vector. So it's also what I've written down here, I just see. So yeah, so in this case, this is how we can deal with multiple outputs and we will learn how this works also yeah, shortly later on next week. Okay, let's now put both uh, concepts together. So we have multiple training examples and multiple outputs. So we have now a matrix for the weights and a design matrix for the inputs. So let's write it like this. So W has the dimensionality H times M, like on the previous slide, and X 
has the dimen dimensionality n times m. It's a design matrix, right? But now if you want to multiply those two, you notice that they are not compatible, right? The inner dimensions don't match. So that's why we have the transpose here. So get me write it like this. So this has the dimensionality on m times n now. So those dimensions match m is um, h times one dimensional. So if I multiply those, so these match the inner ones. So we have n, so this one is h times n plus h times one. So the resulting resulting matrix, if we look at this one, the dimensionality of that one should be h times n. However, it is usually nice for each layer to resemble the input dimensions of the previous layer, right? So the original input, you can think of x as the original input, was n times m. So it would be nice if we have for this one as input to the next layer, the same yeah, dimensionality, like the same ordering. I mean, not exactly the same dimensionality, but the, in, the first dimension, the inputs, the number of inputs should be the same. We are carrying over the same number of training examples. So what we would want is for A, for the outputs, to have dimensionality n times something, so n times h, where h is the hidden dimension. So in order to achieve that, this is why we have the transpose. So with this transpose, we have then the n times h dimension. So it's usually nice, what I mean is it's nice to have the training examples as the rows always. Now, if you think of this, what's going on here, you can think of it as a linear transformation that is happening to x. So instead of the original m features, we now have h features. And h could be larger or smaller than m. So there are, in deep learning both, um, some networks make make it larger and some make it smaller. So there's a linear transformation, like I said, but it's not necessarily uh, completely true. So if this is a nonlinear function, then it's not a linear transformation. It's a linear transformation that goes through a nonlinear activation function. But we will talk about this activation function um, next lecture. So, but yeah, this is just like the overall notation. Um, also in textbooks, you may notice that there is no transpose. So I have a short note here about that. And the reason is in textbooks, in older textbooks especially, they um, have not the n times n, n times m design matrix, they have a m times n design matrix. So they have the columns as, um, and rows switched, which is a little bit confusing. I just want to note that uh, in case you stumble upon it. So usually modern deep learning has n times m dimensional inputs. Sometimes it makes things uh, more inconvenient from a linear algebra perspective because you notice here we have these transpose. If you have it the other way around, you don't need the transposes. But yeah, um, there's always a trade-off. All right, so um, why also this wx notation? Why not xw? Actually, in the next video, I will show you that in PyTorch, it's the other way around. Um, traditionally, though, this is convenient because it's there's some intuition behind it in terms of linear algebra. If you think of um, traditional methods, how you write things in linear algebra, it's that you have a transformation matrix that you apply to a vector. So the vector would be here your feature vector. And um, this makes it sometimes, or for some people, easier to think about linear algebra in a ge geometry context. So here, this is just an identity matrix, so nothing is going to happen. So technically, these diagonals, I think I have a slide on that, these diagonals are for scaling, or well, this diagonal is for scaling values in the vector, and um, the other diagonal is for translation, so moving things. And it's like easy to th um, see um, so why the eigen uh, sorry why the identity matrix here is not doing anything because the scaling is here one and one so scaling something by one doesn't change it and translation by zero doesn't change uh, anything either so in this way the um, original inputs are preserved so also if you think of it as a dot product 
let me uh, remove the notation here. If you think of it as a dot product, so one times zero with this one, it's basically one times x1 plus zero times x2, which is x1, right? And here zero times x1 is zero plus one times x2 is x2. So nothing is going on here. Or yeah, he actually has the slide on that. Here's like a summary of what I just meant. So you can also yeah write it as follows. So whereas um, if you so you can decompose this into two um, separate operations, vector addition with this scalar here, and then you can think of this first one as scaling the x coordinate, and then you can think of this one is scaling the y coordinate. So like I said before, these are for scaling and then the other ones are moving the vectors. So these are for moving the vectors. Um, yeah, here I just have a example of the scaling. So for example, if you have a matrix that has a three here, it would scale three. So uh, sorry, scale the x <laughs> axis by three. So it's kind of stretching it here and so forth. Here is it's scaling or stretching the y-axis by a factor of two. And um, this one here at the bottom is doing both stretching and scaling. And you can maybe as a yeah, optional homework think about the translation. But in the context of deep learning, uh, I think it might be helpful sometimes to think of it as a uh, series of transformations. But yeah, also one of the reasons why we use linear algebra is more like for making notations more compact and I will show you in the next video how this is achieved in PyTorch.